This video, of course, is about Mythic Rick, and he is the first character that you'll be getting in the Mythic Tokens. He requires one Mythic Token, so if you have any S-Class characters at Tier 2, level 110 or higher, you'll be able to get your hands on a Gold Mythic Rick, plus 10 bennies as well. However, if you do manage to get all the way up to 163 Mythic Tokens, and getting 33 mythic keys from completing the world map stuff that you need to do to get the mythic keys you'll be able to get a second gold mythic rick and you do need two gold mythics of any character to get them to tier 5 along with obviously a lot of gear a lot of other fodder i'll be going over this in fine detail to give you that top-notch information in a future video but it's going to be one mythic token and 163 to get those two ricks now on to the video to check out what he's going to be like. Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Rick as a mythic character. He will be one of those extremely early characters a lot of you get your hands on especially if you're coming from the S class era. If you are brand new to the game it might be a little bit harder to get him long term. But I'm sure they'll add avenues to get this character in the future once those mythic token collections go away. Visually on the right hand side, I think Rick looks really nice. It's a little bit disappointing. He has not got his hat. But I think at that point in the storyline, he's kind of, you know, given his hat. He's passed it on to Carl. So it does make sense on the right hand side. On the left hand side, he is wearing the hat. Looks a bit more old man Rick here. But um, yeah, yeah everything looks good here. He, he kind of looks like a grizzled post-apocalyptic policeman I, mean, I don't really think there's much else you can say about rick here if we look at him as a tier 5 level 600 mythic we can see that he has 13,284 attack 14,646 defense and 13,196 hp he is an alert character Holding that pistol makes a lot of sense. Considered a support character, mythic character, of course. And his allegiance is part of Atlanta. I think we've had some other Atlanta characters already. I want to say, was it, is it Andrea? And maybe Abraham? I'm not, maybe Abraham's called Militia. It's gonna, have, gonna have, be hard to keep track of all these different allegiances. But we shall go across his adrenaline rush. It's called Opportunistic Assault. It's a 66 AP cost rush. Deal 400% damage to two enemies. Those enemies get disarmed for two turns. Two teammates get 25% attack for two turns. So, a little bit going on here. The damage is actually pretty nice, especially to two enemies. You can massively boost that with the, obviously, mods, weapon, stats, 1535s. Because he is a leader, he is going to be in the center, which generally means he's going to get quite a lot of attack stat if you go with a lot of 1535 characters. The disarm is a little nice touch on top, but that's only going to work if he doesn't destroy them. If he takes those two characters out, the disarm is not going to work, unless it disarms other characters when he takes them out, like other characters do. But by the wording here, it doesn't appear that's going to be the case. The two teammates getting 25% attack for two turns, I actually like quite a lot. That obviously means you can lead with Rick's Rush, and then follow up with the rushes of other characters that got that 25% boost. Okay, so we are on the rush turn. I'm going to focus the character who hasn't got a defense buff, which is going to be Connie here. We are going to rush. We'll do bonus damage. The second character might not get taken out, but they will be disarmed if that's going to be the case. We should take out Connie, which we will. And you can see Dante took the hit. He is a little bit more defensive. He has got the defense buff, but he is going to be disarmed. That means obviously there's not going to be any danger in doing basic attacks against him in terms of his weapon and so on. You can see the 25% attack went to two other teammates. Both Pete and Axel at the top both have that boost. And that means any follow-up rushes by those characters will, of course, do extra damage because of that. So I like this rush quite a lot. I kind of see him a little bit like Eren in the s class era where he'll just do a bit of damage there will be a little bit of control in there as well i don't think this arm is as good as impair because obviously impair would just stop them from rushing with the amount of damage you did but it does allow for follow-up attacks to you know get some ap in if, if required the extra damage for teammates is a big boost 25 percent may not sound like a lot but in the Mythic era, that's 25% of a character's, you know, 20,000 plus base attack a lot of the time. Not even including, like, huge boosts that you can get 
from weapons, mods, and so on. The mods obviously going to change the percentage base increases. So the 22, 24,000 that you could get on some S class characters is going to be massively eclipsed going forward. Now he has got a signature move and it is called Identify Weak Spots. The picture of it is his is like claw arm effectively. I don't think he's going to attack with that, but we'll see. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of three turns, attack an enemy for 100% damage, two teammates get 30 crit for three turns. This is going to be actually pretty nice. The 100% damage isn't going to be anything better than a basic attack, but he will get more AP. He'll get 35 AP. The initial cooldown means that that's going to be crit to teammates who could potentially get bonuses on their own signature moves, on their own basic attacks. And that obviously will play into their specialist skills or their weapons. So, for instance, if you had a tough character like Andrea and she had a rampage weapon or a princess who had a rampage weapon, hitting crits is going to be massively beneficial for these hard hitters. And because it's turn one, you can do it before any real buffs come in on the defense team. This time I'll go up against Connie. It can crit, but it, it most likely will not. We do oh, It does actually crit. It doesn't actually do too bad amount of damage. And you can see the amount of uh, boosts that these characters got was 30 crit boosts. They already had 20% attack boost because of their own weapons. And that just means they're like more likely to hit crits themselves. And look at that. 7k basic attack crit against a maxed out mythic character silver mythic character from a maxed out silver mythic character so like for like in that case it is going to be a nice boost hitting those crits so the signature move is actually not too bad at all like i said it'll play into the hands of certain characters especially other characters that you want to do initial damage on it will also be great with other characters that have turn one signature moves like alpha where she'll do bonus damage on top and she has a specialist that requires her to crit to get the best out of it obviously because she was a fast character you can get 100 percent crit on her on her weapon if you so wish but if you didn't well rick would be a big bonus getting that signature move off first it does seem like with his rush so far and his signature move that he's basically leading the charge i like that a lot it plays into my idea of how rick is as a character where he's the leader he does his rush first then other people will rush afterwards he does his signature move first and other people will do signature moves afterwards i like that i like that feeling quite a lot actually now he has of course got some mythic abilities these are the passive skills for this character you can see the iconography for the sheriff's badge and uh, the hat i like that rick's mythic abilities he has cunning because he is a support character i would have preferred he was considered a damage dealer personally and that way he would have got a boost in his damage but it's not that big a deal it's not like too much of his kit would rely on the basic attack damage his rush does just a big hit Cunning just basically means that he's less likely to trigger weapon effects. That means on that signature move turn one, if you're coming up against a completely windowless team in pairs on defense, stuns on defense, he's got less chance of doing that. Kind of like a, a disarm would, where a disarm's a 100% chance not to trigger, whereas Rick here has a 15% chance. It also works against walkers in things like SR. His next one is called Independence. When attacking targets with the control roll, 20% attack. I talked about this on a previous character. I can't remember exactly which character it was. I think it was Alpha, where she was like anti-medic, where she'd do more damage against medic characters. I really like this. I like that they're going to start bringing this in. Controllers are going to be extremely powerful on defense teams. Even if they only have limited control, if you have two or three of them, that's two or three characters getting off sig moves, turn two, weapons on top in terms of just full control, and that can be a very, very um, painful. And that means that if he was to use his signature move against the character that was a controller, turn one, he'd obviously do boosted damage. The next one is he has a 20% resist against AP drain. You cannot currently get mods that do this, so he's actually got something that you cannot mod to resist. This is great, and that means like AP drain mods and AP drain weapons will be less effective against rick 20 percent of the time when they actually proc they will not work he will resist it the last one is called heroic death when taken out all teammates get 20 percent attack for three turns i think that's actually pretty cool in that again he's kind of leading the charge if he gets taken out his teammates get a boost i, I don't know would that actually happen would you be like yeah rick's <laughs> dead let's go i don't know maybe everyone would go sort of into revenge mode to try and uh, get everything back it would have been cool if that particular character that took him out got sort of a debuff on them because they took him out. Maybe that would have been a little bit of a way to go. Okay, so I've switched up the defense team just a little bit. We have now got John on the defense team and he is a controller. 
If I select Rick, you'll see a green text come up above Rick's name as I do the signature move. And it should say 20% extra attacks. Let's see. 30 crit, 20% extra attack. So this is obviously really beneficial. Controllers are quite stat heavy early on. And you can see that Rick is, like I said, he's mainly leading the charge. I don't see him as being that hugely effective damage dealer. And that comes down to his base stats being quite defensive. But he's more of an enabler, and that's why he's a support character. But I'm sure with the right setup, Rick can be very effective. I have got him right now with his base weapon. No combat mods. He's just getting leader skill, and he is getting a 1535. Mainly because I don't actually have him fully maxed out in the beta region. I have him at like 425 or 475 as a tier 5 mythic so that's one of the reasons why i've got a couple of 1535s in there the characters i am coming up against have more stats as tier 4 maxed out silver mythics but this is where rick i think is going to be the most powerful is the fact that he is a rainbow leader all teammates gain 20 percent attack and increase trait advantage attack damage by 15 percent i kind of like this a lot obviously no leaders from the mythic characters are going to be ap on attack leaders just yet this may change in the future this is the first character a lot of people are going to get their hands on from the museum so you're given basically an attack leader big thumbs up because of that and the trait advantage is kind of like it's like having a double down on your combat mods. When you are an alert character and you do attack versus strong on your mods, that's cool. That, in my mind, that's doubling down on the trait damage you're going to do. This is giving you a, on base. It is only 15%, but the multiplier should come in. So if you have it here and it's on an alert character and you have it in the mods, the amount of output should drastically increase. And of course, because he is a rainbow lead, it happens with all of the traits you've got. If you select a character, it tells you who's going to be doing trait damage against them. For instance, you've got Sadiq here is a tough character. Trait damage from fast characters. I'm not sure if it's going to give me the extra boost in, in the green text, whether it tells you. Enemy minus 30% attack. That's going to be something to do with her weapon or her passive. So it's nothing to do with the kit. So it's going to work just like combat mods where it's going to give you the boost but it's just going to show you based on the amount of a damage output that you actually do you know it's going to work like that with every single t character that you attack and i think that's good i think obviously the amount of bonus damage you can do that does mean that with rick as a leader having a little bit of a diverse attack team could be quite beneficial to make sure you're using that trait damage to the best if it can be used because if you use a full alert team let's say and there's no strong characters on the defense team, that part of the leader skill will not work. However, if it does work with trait damage on weapons, or if you go off trait on your combat mods, for instance, if you take a fast character and do attack versus alert, instead of doubling down and doing attack versus tough on their mods, does it boost the actual mod itself? I think it should be quite easy to work out whether it's boosting the mod itself, because you're going to see just generally 15% extra damage, pretty much as simple as that. I'll try and get that clarified, and if I do, I'll put that in my top comment. But for now, I'd probably just see it as the main trait of the character is what it's boosting, but I'll see if it can boost weapons and combat mods as well. Now, when it comes to Rick's base weapon, it is Rick's Unexpected Colt Python. It is a really nice looking weapon. This is it as a, I think this is still silver. The weapons have kind of been revealed within beta, and I will go over the ones I've already reviewed, but none of them are that spectacular, if I'm honest. This one is no exception to that. 25% defense base a medium bonus to ap when attacking and in the last slot bonus crit 30 crit when attacking enemies with more than 70 percent of their hp that's how you saw him getting those crit bonuses in the previous clips but the 30 percent defense was not helping his attack stat at all i was using this as a base weapon i don't have any armory tokens here on beta so i couldn't put a weapon in his hands once you get like a 40 to 50 percent attack weapon in his hands that's when you're going to see that attack stat explode if you've got those 1535 characters around him again massive boost so the potential of rick's damage output can be great but i definitely obviously replace this weapon and unfortunately i think i'm going to be saying that pretty much about every single mythic character's weapon because none of them seem to be that great i will probably go over this in a bit finer detail in a future video maybe over the weekend 
But overall, I think Rick is actually quite nice. It is really good that they're giving away an attack leader extremely early in those Mythic tokens. And I can see him being quite usable long term for a lot of people. He's always a character that you can fall back on. I, I talked about this with Angel as a defense lead. If you've got like a, a strange mix of nice characters, you could always fall back on that rainbow defense lead with Angel. And that's going to be what Rick's going to be like. If you get like a fast, alert, and a tough character, and you're like, damn, I don't have that leader that can work with them in the future, you can always fall back on Rick and know that you can use those characters together. And he visually looks great. I think I'm pretty much going to be saying this about most of the Mythic characters. I haven't not said that so far. The visuals, they definitely knocked those out of the park. They did miss a slight opportunity with Rick, however, as you can see on his on his belt he has got handcuffs and the handcuffs are used as the iconography for a controller so they could have made rick a controller with the handcuffs instead of a support character that's a that's a big mess in my opinion <laughs> that's a big mess but otherwise I, I like rick and i'm definitely you know obviously going to get my hands on him he is a character that you can definitely get to tier five because you are going to be able to get two of him from the museum one of them is very very easily accessible the other one's going to be a little bit harder but potentially a lot of you are going to get two of him which means long term maybe a tier five gold mythic on your roster if you so wish of course but that is the end of my video guys do tell me what you think about mythic rick what are your plans for him? Do you plan to go more all-out attack? Do you plan to use him as more of a support character? I think I'm just going to raise that attack as much as possible. I know what Erin could do with huge amounts of attack, and I think Rick's going to be reasonably similar. But do give me your thoughts down in the comments. That is the end of my video. If you did enjoy the video, if it was useful, please hit the like button. If you are new to my channel, maybe hit subscribe. If you are a subscriber already, make sure you've got all notifications turned on to be told when my videos are released, when my live streams go live. But that is the end of this one today, guys. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.